is News 3 Now at 6. Thanks for joining us. Charlotte is off tonight. Nine Greek houses tied to UW-Madison will be forced to quarantine for the next two weeks after a rise in coronavirus cases the last several days. The university announced that decision made by Public Health Madison-Dane County earlier today. Madam Duxter joins us live from campus with the latest. Adam. Yeah, Eric, of the 400 students that are linked to those nine different Greek houses, more than 30 have tested positive for coronavirus in the last few days. And out of the rest of the 400, they will be mandated to get tested this upcoming week. And in the meantime, those 400 students will have to quarantine for at least the next two weeks. And if they don't, could face a court order or fines of up to $10,000. A UW senior I spoke with earlier today says prior to this decision, some houses were still having parties and inviting people over. And she says despite the university's push for safety, many aren't taking those precautions seriously. I think that what others don't really see is kind of the mindset of a college student right now. Um, in terms of like, I guess the, we're only gonna be here for how long, so why don't we just enjoy it while it lasts? Um, that's kind of rhetoric that I've heard repeated over and over, which only makes the matters worse, right? Um, if you like behave like we're only gonna be here until September 20th, then we're only gonna be here until September 11th. Now, we called both the UW-Madison and public health officials tonight, as well as officers with UW-Madison's Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. We either did not hear back or told they had no comment at this time. All right, Adam Duxer, live on Langdon there tonight. Adam, thank you. Getting a look at the latest COVID numbers from the UW, a total of 462 people. The vast majority are students have now tested positive since testing started. Just yesterday, there were 39 new cases on campus and 37 off campus. Across the state, Wisconsin had its single largest spike in cases since the start of the pandemic. More than 1,400 new cases were confirmed by state and county health officials. About 10% of those cases are still active. The percent of positive tests also rose significantly of the 11,700 tests in the last day. 12.8% came back positive, up from 7.9% from yesterday. We take a look outside tonight, a beautiful Friday evening. There is a chance for some storms later in the weekend. Let's check your first one forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolfi. Gary. Shouldn't be a complete washout, but you'll have to prepare for some storms on Sunday. But right now, things are very nice out there. Uh, skies are mainly clear across southern Wisconsin. A few clouds up in northern Wisconsin. That's an area that saw a few sprinkles of rain earlier earlier and might generate a sprinkler to north and east of Madison overnight. But right now, temperatures are very comfortable in the middle 70s uh, across most of southern Wisconsin. Dew point temperatures in the mid to upper 40s, so the air is pretty dry. Those showers will have a hard time reaching the ground. Look for temperatures to drop into the middle 50s by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow will be sunny and pleasant with a high temperature of 76 degrees. Do you want to take a look at first warrant traffic? Uh, we're seeing some delays. Of course, it's the start of a holiday weekend. Westbound Beltline right now delays from around Seminole Highway back toward Park Street. That's because the traffic is heading right into the sun at this time of day. Also some delays northbound on I-3990 from the Beltline Interchange northward to uh, north of I-94. If you're traveling through uh, far southern Wisconsin, seeing some delays on I-3990 northbound between Beloit and Janesville through the construction zone and also on I-3990 approaching the Beltline from the south north of Madison, heading out into central Wisconsin or through the Dells or into uh, the Fox Valley. Right now traffic looks to be pretty good. That is your news straight out for sworn traffic. Gary, thank you. One person was ejected from their vehicle this afternoon during a multi-vehicle crash. It happened on Stoughton Road near Cottage Grove and Buckeye Roads. The crash happened about two. First responders are asking people still to avoid that area. Two people have been transported by ambulance. Two others were evaluated at the scene. A man carrying several weapons and forcing police to close down a road is in protective custody tonight. Fitchburg officers responded to reports of a man carrying a baseball bat and knives around 11 a.m. They closed down McKee Road east of Highway 18151 and negotiated with him for several hours. Officers believe the man either took narcotics or was having some sort of mental health crisis. McKee Road reopened about 4 p.m. Two men from Missouri have been arrested by federal agents with a cache of weapons at a Kenosha County hotel. This happened earlier this week. 40-year-old Michael Carmo and 33-year-old Cody Smith are now facing federal charges of illegal firearm possession. They were arrested in a hotel in Pleasant Prairie. Law enforcement had received a tip that the two were heading to 
Kenosha to, quote, loot and, quote, possibly pick people off. A witness told authorities Carmo had been talking about political conspiracy theories and that he was not in the right mindset to have a firearm. The complaint says the two are part of a militia group in Missouri and were on their way to Kenosha to attend President Trump's visit. An AR-15, a shotgun, two handguns, some ammunition, a silencer, body armor, and a drone were all recovered. Neither were allowed to be in possession of a firearm due to their criminal backgrounds. Jacob Blake appeared remotely in Kenosha County Court this afternoon. Blake waived his right to a preliminary hearing and then pleaded not guilty to three charges that were filed against him back in July. Those include third degree sexual assault, criminal trespass, and disorderly conduct. Blake appeared via video conference from his hospital bed at Freighter Hospital. He remains paralyzed from the waist down after being shot seven times in the back by an officer on August 23rd. 15 people in Milwaukee have been charged with what prosecutors say are violent crimes after Operation Legends deployment to the city last June. The United States Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Wisconsin announced today that two people have been charged with narcotics-related offenses, 12 more have been charged with firearms-related offenses, and one person has been charged with other violent crimes. The operation was launched to crack down on what President Trump and Attorney General General William Barr described as rising violent crime in American cities. Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris scheduled to make her first campaign appearance in Wisconsin on Labor Day. The vice president, Mike Pence, will also be here at the same time. Now, Senator Harris will be in Milwaukee while Pence is heading to the western part of the state. The vice president plans to visit Dairyland Power Cooperative in La Crosse and deliver remarks. The Biden campaign did not immediately release details about the visit from Senator Harris. Wisconsin is one of a few swing states that the president won by less than a percentage point in 2016. Rapper Kanye West's lawsuit demanding election officials place him on Wisconsin's presidential ballot in November will remain in state court. The U.S. District Judge decided late last night to keep the matter in state court, rejecting the Wisconsin Elections Commission's attempt to move it to federal court. West filed suit in Brown County after the commission voted to keep him off the state's presidential ballot after narrowly missing the filing deadline. The Green Party is still hoping to get on the ballot in Wisconsin as well. The state Supreme Court is their last chance. Our Amy Reed shows us the candidate's argument in a lawsuit filed today. The candidates for the Green Party's presidential ticket said they had more than enough signatures to qualify for Wisconsin's ballot, but a party line vote from the Wisconsin Elections Commission kept them off. We believe those seizures are valid, they should be counted, and we should be on the ballot. The Green Party believes they've done enough to get on the ballot this fall, confident enough to take it to court, filing this motion today with the Wisconsin Supreme Court. They argue since the Elections Commission didn't vote to invalidate more than 1,800 signatures, state law says they should count. The purpose of signature gathering is to show that the people of the state want a party on the ballot. They want to have more choices than Democrats and Republicans. The commission deadlocked three to three on multiple measures related to the Green Party's ballot access. Each time, Republicans pushing to let them on, Democrats pushing to keep them off. They were split over vice presidential candidate Angela Walker's address change. You know, which block she lives on in Florence is not really relevant to why people sign a petition. The lawsuit raises greater questions about ballot access in the state and country. Libertarians got their candidate on, but the Green Party said it's challenging for third parties. It becomes uh, an idea of do we really think that it's democracy if you have to have money and you have to have connections for generations worth of time before you can even have a voice in an election. Barbara Dahlgren said to combat this, the party is pushing for ranked choice voting. It's new this year in Maine, and some lawmakers have tried unsuccessfully to bring it to Wisconsin. Dahlgren worries with no change, policies they support won't reach the public. These are really important policies that we want to see out there in the discourse. And if we're not on the ballot, if we're not um, allowed in the discourse at all, how are people supposed to know that we have their backs? As for the lawsuit, the state Supreme Court has to move quickly in order to meet deadlines for getting ballots to local clerks. So the members of the Elections Commission have until Tuesday to respond. Reporting in Madison, Amy Reed, News 3 Now. So to come tonight, the UW system releasing preliminary numbers today about how the pandemic has impacted student enrollment. But first, Dane County says it's running out of federal funding to help keep people in their homes. That story next at 6.
Ashley Home Store's unbeatable Labor Day 72-hour mattress sale is on. We guarantee the best mattress deals in Wisconsin, savings up to 60% off top brands, and free delivery within five days on in-stock beds. Only at Ashley Home Store. Rocket Drive Block? Rush of Pole Crush? Jam a Grand Slam? Drunk? Drunk? That'd be insane! Rolling that? Rolling this? Roll together? Drunk? That, that would be super insane. insane. Hey all you ladies and guys. Drive sober on the road. No matter how many wheels you roll. Get a free TV during Steinhoffel's biggest Labor Day sale on now. Save 35 to 75 percent store wide, plus $100 off, and incredible specials priced to sell out, like any size Sealy mattress, 99 bucks. Steinhoffel's has the largest selection of quality furniture and mattresses, and it's all on sale. That's right, all living room, dining room, and bedroom furniture is on sale, plus special financing and free in carton shipping. So save big and get a free TV during Steinhoffel's Labor Day sale. Families are reeling right now, enduring illness, losing their employer's plans and droves. They need lifelines now. My plan lowers health care costs, gets us universal coverage quickly when Americans desperately need it. This is my promise to you. When I'm president, I will take care of your health care coverage and your family the same way I would my own. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Furniture and Appliance Mart's 72-hour Labor Day Appliance Sale is on. Get Wisconsin's best appliance deals guaranteed, plus 18 months no interest, and free delivery within five days on all in-stock appliances at Furniture and Appliance Mart, inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Nearly 1.4 million jobs were added to the U.S. economy in August as the jobs recovery continued to slow a bit. This was in line with expectations. However, America is still down 11.5 million jobs from February when the pandemic started. The unemployment rate fell to 8.4 percent. Dane County says it's running out of federal funding to help keep people in their homes. This as Congress still hasn't finalized a deal on a second round of the CARES Act. Amanda Quintana joins us now with details. Dane County Executive Joe Parisi says the money to help with rental assistance will run out next week. Today he sent letters to Senators Tammy Baldwin and Ron Johnson saying as the pandemic continues its grip on the community, the Tenant Resource Center is coming to the end of its $10 million in CARES Act funding. He says the program has kept more than 13,000 people in their homes, but will now have to stop accepting applications. It's just crucial that we have additional funding as, as the last round of funding is running out now so the people who have been able to stay in their homes are able to continue because if not, people are going to lose their homes. They're going to lose their apartments. Um, and and, and the, the, the fallout from that will be tremendous. In his letters, Parisi said the county has spent millions of dollars helping small businesses, including farmers. He's asking for another round of funding and soon. He says even if evictions are halted, that's just adding more and more debt for those who can't pay rent. He says if people get kicked out of their homes, then landlords can't pay their mortgages and the effects will just ripple through our economy. Amanda, thank you. And there is more to come tonight at 6. Businesses across the country are struggling with financial hardship during the pandemic. We'll speak with one in Muscaday about how it's trying to overcome its specific struggles. Plus, we're looking ahead to the extended holiday weekend, and Gary will have our full forecast when we come back. It's the Ayers Furniture 80th Anniversary Sale with huge savings on quality name brands including Lazy Boy with recliners starting at $2.99 and Smith Brothers Amish handcrafted sofas at special anniversary sale prices. Ayers Furniture with free delivery. Don't miss it. Update your home at the Brothers Main Labor Day Super Sale.
Saving is easier on tons of great brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Amana. And Maine makes getting more easier with up to 18 months of 0% financing. Want even more easy? Select items include free delivery through Monday. That's the more store. The Labor Day Super Sale. More selection, more savings, and more easy. Hurry in and see today at the Brothers Maine, your local store for more since 1938. When you put money in a big bank, there it goes. But when you keep your money at Associated Bank, it gets invested close to home. It might become this family's renovation or help this little one's college fund. It could build local business or your favorite neighborhood spot. Because when you bank with Associated Bank, your money works in your community. All you have to do is make a simple choice. Send your money there or keep it here. Associated Bank. Your money works here. Lawless criminals terrorize Kenosha. Joe Biden takes a knee. Biden and the radical left's weak response has led to chaos and violence. And their calls for defunding police would make it worse. President Trump is making it stop, sending National Guard and federal law enforcement to protect Wisconsin's families. Communities, not criminals. Jobs, not mobs. Strong leadership when America needs it most. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. It's the Ayers Furniture 80th Anniversary Sale with huge savings on quality name brands including Sealy with queen size sets starting at $3.99 and flex steel sofas starting at $8.99. Ayers 80th Anniversary Sale and Saturday at 5 p.m. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The UW system says fall enrollment appears to be only slightly down from last year. Nearly 126,000 students enrolled at the 10 universities that have begun on-campus classes. The figures, which are preliminary, suggest that enrollment could be down by roughly 1% compared to last year. Financial hardship for businesses right now is nothing new. So many are struggling just to stay open during the pandemic, and that includes sports venues. Leah Linscheid headed out to Muscaday to hear about one club's particular woes and how they're over overcoming them. Silence. Oh. Isn't something the Muscaday Sportsman's oh. Club is known for. Oh. Never in my wildest dreams that I ever figured oh. something like that would happen. Virgil Bumcamp can't list all the events keeping this place oh. booming for years. People use it for, you know, weddings, graduations. Paul. Oh. You know, it's just unbelievable. I'm still halfway in shock. But then again, who could have called oh. COVID? The onset set back this small town club, which had to cancel two of its biggest money-making shoots. Oh. Since then, the sound of gunfire has picked back up here with some safety precautions in place. Social distancing on the trap line. When you're shooting, you're actually nine feet apart. And then we sanitize all the tables, wipe them down. Virgil thought they would dodged a bullet. So did Treasurer Jay Adams until one midsummer day. It was July 12th. It was a little after 6 o'clock in the morning, and I noticed I had a couple missed calls on my phone. Jay's also a volunteer firefighter. My fire department pager went off, and it, you kind of your heart sinks a little bit. And they told me, well, we had a storm last night, and they think it was struck by lightning. The fire started kind of in the southeast corner of the building. Probably within a half hour, they told me, they said they weren't going to be able to save the building. Very... Uh, Emotional, you know, a lot of people are tears in their eyes and this and that, so. Paul! Oh. Still, these sportsmen have beaten back silence yet again. They have a plan in place to rebuild the club and keep the sport going. Donations coming in from not only the local community, but from across the country. It's, it's, the, it's been a tremendous support. The club has raised thousands for the new building. Oh. And in the meantime, shoots are still taking place. Been a big part of the community for years. You know. oh. Because neither a fire nor a nationwide health emergency Whoa. can keep these guys quiet. Whoa. Not by a long shot. Whoa. In Muscaday, I'm Leah Lynchide for News 3 Now.
Support for the Sportsman's Club is going strong this weekend. Their 51st team trap shoot is Sunday. It's actually the largest trap shoot in the entire state. Nearly 500 people are signed up for it. You can visit two entries are closed, but there will be food, raffles, a silent auction and more. The shoot starts at 7 a.m. on Sunday, but maybe Saturday is the better day of the two this weekend. Gary is here with our first worn holiday weekend forecast, Gary. Well, unfortunately, the timing doesn't look great for Sunday morning. That seems to be one of the chances, higher chances for showers and thunderstorms. Three things you need to know in the forecast. We will get a nice start to the weekend tomorrow with sunny skies and high temperatures in the middle 70s. But again, those uh, shower and thunderstorm chances come in late tomorrow night into Sunday morning, maybe again late Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. And then as we head into Labor Day Monday, uh, mainly dry, but it will start turning cooler and then it will turn very chilly with pretty much uh, rain in the forecast from Tuesday through Saturday morning of next week. So a prolonged period of wet weather. For the Labor Day holiday itself, look for a high of 76 tomorrow, 76 on Sunday. Be windy on Sunday as well, and then for Labor Day Monday, variably cloudy skies, just a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm. Doppler track right now, pretty quiet. A few sprinkles of rain have fallen apart in north central Wisconsin. Isolated thunderstorm just north of the Duluth Superior area. We might see an isolated shower north of Madison later on tonight, but tomorrow night, as those thunderstorms develop in Minnesota and Iowa, they'll head toward Wisconsin. Fortunately, it'll be at the time of the day where the atmosphere is a little bit more stable, but there's still an outside chance, a marginal risk of a strong to severe thunderstorm with hail, gusty winds, and heavy rain the main threats and that moves eastward through most of southern Wisconsin on Sunday. Again, thunderstorm chances highest in the morning and then late in the afternoon into uh, Sunday evening. Have to watch out for an isolated strong to severe thunderstorm at that time. Rainfall amounts at least in the short term over the holiday weekend generally around a half inch. There could be some areas that pick up closer to an inch, especially south and west of Madison uh, where a heavier thunderstorm is a little bit more likely. But then as we head through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, notice how the rain adds up. Now this is a very New computer model forecast. It's showing slightly less rain, but still some general two to three inch rainfalls over southern Wisconsin into northern Illinois. Spread out over a four day period. That's not bad for southwestern Wisconsin, where it's been very dry, and especially across northern Illinois, where they're actually in a slight drought. But north and east of Madison, that's where we've had a lot of rain recently. Hopefully, the heavier rain stays to the south. Weather track right now upper level winds from the northwest. To the south, though, there's the subtropical branch of the jet stream. This will bring a surge of moisture north on Sunday and then as we head into the uh, early part of next week the cool air will arrive with moisture coming in from the south and that's a good setup to get a, a widespread rain uh, weather track right now pretty quiet a little trough of low pressure just kind of shifted the winds more than anything else but to the west notice those winds out of the southwest so that will bring temperatures back up into the middle 70s by tomorrow afternoon tomorrow look for skies to become mostly sunny it'll be mild high temperature at 76 degrees future track Quiet conditions overnight before a shower chance passes by late to, uh, tonight. Tomorrow, dry during the day, most of tomorrow night, and then by Sunday morning, here come those showers and thunderstorms by early on Sunday morning. Those will move out of here Sunday afternoon, maybe a, a few peaks of sunshine before the next batch develops. Rainfall amounts generally around a half inch, some areas over an inch in heavier thunderstorms. But look at the cool weather on the way for next week. Highs only around 60 Tuesday and Wednesday. Rain through Friday and then probably ending by the start of next weekend. And coming up in sports, a breakout year for MVS. Aaron Rodgers thinks so, while the Packers QB says he's proud of his wideout. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. make it absolutely clear rioting is not protesting looting is not protesting it's lawlessness plain and simple and those who do it should be prosecuted fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames he can't stop the violence because for years he's fomented it but his failure to call on his own supporters to stop acting as an armed militia in this country shows how weak he is. Violence will not bring change. It will only bring destruction. It's wrong in every way. If I were president, my language would be less divisive. I'd be looking to lower the temperature in this country, not raise it. Donald Trump is determined to instill fear in America because Donald Trump adds fuel to every fire. This is not who we are. I believe we'll be guided by the words of Pope John Paul II. 
words drawn from the scriptures. Be not afraid. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Hey, call again. Our water makes my skin and hair feel like I'm 90. How do you feel about high-efficiency water softeners from Culligan Water? What? How do you feel about smoother skin and luxurious hair? I feel very good about that. That's the power of water. It's Slumberland's huge Labor Day sale. Now is the time to focus on your home for less. Get this stylish, comfy sectional for just $9.98 and get the storage ottoman free. Or an incredible price on this highly recommended Sealy Posturepedic Queen Mattress for just $4.49. If you've been waiting for our very best deals, this is it. And get free shipping with no minimum. You don't want to miss this one. The Labor Day Sale at Slumberland Furniture. It's the first holiday weekend for theater change since the pandemic began. And Saturday morning, we're going to take you inside to see what's changed, what hasn't, and if what's now showing is even worth your money. Join us Saturday morning at 5 and 8. There's usually a receiver that catches the eye of Aaron Rodgers at training camp. And then during the season, he has a big year. Take Alan Lazard as an example. This season, it's been Marquez Valdez Scantling. After a disappointing second year with the Packers, MVS has returned to form and has Rodgers calling him one of the one wideout that he's been most impressed with, thanks to Valdez Scantling catching everything that's come his way. All reactionary. So, however the ball comes to you and how your brain tells you to catch it is, is how you catch a football. Um, so obviously there's different ways to catch a football um, and this camp have had more of those catches. This is the new standard for MVS. Now he's making the catches he's uh, expected to make and he's adding some some extra plays in there where he's, you know, doing some smart things and, and showing showing the growth. The reigning Big Ten champs have returned to the hardwood in Madison. The Badgers have been working out in small groups over the past couple weeks and it's been different. But it's better than nothing. And after a season that ended abruptly on and off the court, to be able to be back with the guys and no more Zoom calls, it's a pretty good feeling for Coach Guard. You appreciate even more the relationships, the com camaraderie, the bonding, the, you know, just the people of it because, yeah, it was all taken away you know, for a while and still is not back to normal, but to be able to get back in the gym and hear the ball bouncing and, and uh, see those guys out there, albeit in mask and, you know, obviously a different setting than we're used to, but uh, it's been awesome. First round of the tour championship is a two man show between John Rahm and Dustin Johnson. DJ entered with a two shot lead. Rahm closed with that birdie at 10 to drop him to 10 under. Johnson would answer with a chirper of his own He's 13 under, no. Rom's 13 under, three rounds to go, and $15 million on the line. My son was 22 under last night with Dustin Johnson on PlayStation. Oh, okay. So, yeah. you know, let's see if he can do that. Yeah. Let's, do that. let's go to Gary. I'll get my Wii Golf out next. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a beautiful evening out there. Skies are clear from the WISC Sky Cam. Temperatures, middle 70s right now. So, if you want to start the holiday weekend early, you've got my permission. Uh, for the weekend itself, look for temperatures to be mid 70s for tomorrow and Sunday. Thunderstorm chances on Sunday. Labor Day probably dry, but temperatures around 70. A little cooler that day. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6. We'll see you back here tonight at 10.